Well, blessings on everybody. Um, I want to share this time on uh, a part two. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I shared on Jesus made deviled ham. And I want to share a part two on that, but in reality it's not, it's not, um, it's not a part two. It's not a building so that if you saw only one of these you would understand uh, it without the necessity of watching the other one. I want to take a little bit at a different angle though. And I want to remind you that uh, this story is pertains to the, the storyline that was going there. It's not about you. Uh, our, our goal is finding Jesus' heart and keep our eyes on Jesus. So um, uh, in, in this story, Jesus comes on the scene and uh, there he finds problems everywhere. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you first through the problems and then I'm going to show you uh, Jesus' answer. Um, but the first problem was that there was a man who had demons, uh, a demoniac, and his problem was with demons. All right, so I'm going to just read that, and it's in, it's in Mark chapter 5, verse 1. This is what we used last time when we shared out of the book of Mark. So this is the first problem. This man has a problem with demons. And they came over on the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. And then verse 5, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. So here is his problems. Uh, he has problems with, with demons. The next <clears throat> is um, the town has problems with the man who has demons. Okay? So the man has problems with demons. The town has problems with the man who has the demons. All right? Verse 3, we'll just read verse 3 and 4. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because, they, because that he had been often bound with fetters and with chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, Neither could any man tame him. All right, and so that the 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 demoniac has problem with demons. The town has problems with the demoniac, and the next one is the demons have a problem with Jesus. This is verse six uh, through ten. But when he saw Jesus talking about <clears throat> the man, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said. What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? So, clearly this is the demons speaking through him, and they have a problem with Jesus. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Uh, for he said, for Jesus said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. All right. And then verse 11 through 13, we have uh, pig farmers. <clears throat> and they have problems with their pigs because they ran off. Uh, and as you know the story. So we'll read verse beginning with verse 11. Now there were there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. <clears throat> so now these pig farmers have a problem with their pigs because they've lost them all. All right, and then just uh, verse 13, and the pigs have a problem too. Pigs have a problem with the cliffs, okay? And verse 13, And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. We're rereading re verse 13. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. All right, and then one more set of people <laughs> with problems. Um, uh, and we seem to have an abundance of people with problems here. Is the town leaders. Now they have a problem with Jesus. 
uh, and they have a problem with Jesus because of the actions that he took in this situation, because of the actions that he took in this situation. Verse 14 through 17. <clears throat> and they that fed the, fed the swine fled and told it to the city and, in, and uh, in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they, they that saw it told how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him, pray Jesus, to depart out of their coasts. Okay, so let's review. <laughs> they all had problems, all of them. They all had different kinds of problems. Um, some of the problems that, that some of them were having may have been due to their own making. For example, the pig farmers. Maybe in, uh, in Israel they shouldn't have been raising pigs. Okay? So they should have been raising sheep. They should have been raising lambs for sacrifice to God. Uh, that was, that was the, the agricultural society in Israel was to support the um, system that offered unto God. <clears throat> um, and, um, and there's also this thought that maybe, maybe Jesus wouldn't have sent them, sent the demons into a flock of lambs or sheep. Maybe he only would do that with pigs, that he might not have put that into his sheep and to his lambs. All right, so some of them, again, may have had problems of their own making. The demoniac, we don't know the story, but there's a chance he opened the door somewhere to the enemy. And then the city leaders, uh, it appears to me, now it doesn't directly say this, but it appears to me that maybe they wanted Jesus to leave because it was hurting their bottom line. It wasn't good uh, practice to be losing money in, uh, in, in that area or something. So, um, all these people have problems, and they kind of remind me of a, um, of a prayer meeting. <laughs> um, where people gather together, and they have all these various and sundry problems that they want to present to Jesus, okay? And uh, so... Uh, in this situation, everybody's having problems, but nobody's seeing Jesus. Um, so Jesus, Jesus, what does he do? He answers just one prayer request. He answers one prayer request, and it sets off a chain of events that ends up displeasing other people. Ends up causing a problem for others. His, his, his giving an answer to just one person instead of to all of them, has brought about other problems with people. <clears throat> so, when you look at it like that, what's the answer? Well, the answer is the cross. The answer is one answer for everybody. The answer is it doesn't matter if you have demons or you're a pig farmer or you're running your city manager or uh, you're a, you know you're a pig or whatever it doesn't matter there's one answer ultimately for all of them and that answer is the cross and so um, if you look if you have your Bible look with me in 2nd Corinthians 5 and chapter uh, chapter 5 verse 21 and um, I'll read this the way it's written there, and then I'll, I'll say it the way I usually say it, particularly to our Bible school students, so it can be a little more clear. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be, talking about Jesus, God hath made Jesus, he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Uh, the way I usually say it for the for the students, uh, he who knew no sin was made to be sin, 
that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Okay, so here it is. Here is the answer. The answer is the cross. Um, and uh, Jesus is the one who took up this, this answer. Jesus is the one who bore up the answer. The, uh, and he took up the particular sin of the pig farmers and uh, of everybody, of the whole group of the party, of the demoniac, the townspeople, the pig farmers. He took up all of their sin. And, um, but I want you to notice specifically, because sometimes all we notice in, in verses sometimes is what pertains to us. You know, uh, that he was made sin so that I could be made the righteousness of God. But I want you to notice that he was made, Jesus was made to be sin. He was made to be sin in order to, to bring about our forgiveness, in order to, to bring about our salvation, in order to, to rectify people and situations and problems and all of this kind of stuff. And... And, uh, and I'm speaking now specifically about our story with, with all the problems. And this person has a problem with this one. And this one has a problem with this one. And this one has a problem with this one because this happened. And, there, and it's just a mess. It's just a mess. Jesus lands on the shore. He's in the boat with his disciples. Hopefully they're sharing the word and glorifying God. And they get out of the boat and everybody's got a problem. And they think, you know, and sometimes we think that the answer is just a prayer request. Um, when the answer sometimes relates directly to the cross and I'd say most of the time but nonetheless <clears throat> so um, so when when uh, he joined together and he joined us uh, so that he could take us into death Jesus uh, in a very serious way Jesus made himself deviled ham and I know that's the funny part especially last time but it's like a, he who knew no sin. So it's like a spotless lamb taking into himself and becoming a deviled pig. Okay. Taking into himself and becoming a deviled pig. All right. So, uh, and then, then he goes to the cross and dies. That's what Jesus does. See? He who knew no sin was made to be our sin and was joined with us. And when he became one with us, the Father said, the, you know, turned his back on Jesus, and he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So, um, so he went to, Jesus went to the cross when he was one with us, when he had become, as it were, a deviled pig. And it's just as these, these deviled pigs rushed forward uh, and went off the cliff to bring about death. It's the same kind of thing. Death was the what's going to be the remedy in this situation, except for that's just a very faded shadow of the real thing. So in Jesus' death, he dealt with the pigs, and he dealt with the flesh, which includes the townspeople, the pig farmers, and the demoniac. All right, so let's look at that scripturally. First, the pigs. Jesus, in his death, dealt with the pigs. It's Hebrews 2.14. <clears throat> For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also... Likewise took part of the same, meaning he became part flesh like us, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. All right? So death was the answer for the, for the demons in the man and the demons in the pig. Now, uh, now the flesh side of it, or the pig farmer and the townspeople and the demoniac, that's in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 7. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Now, now I want you to notice how often death is the answer for the, for the flesh, for, for the pig farmer flesh, or for a demoniac flesh, or for townspeople flesh, or town leaders flesh. Um, we're baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried by baptism into his death. That's twice it said that. Like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, excuse me, even so we should walk in the new life of what was raised. He was raised. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, 
we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection because of oneness with him. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified, there four times, with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. That's five times, that's a high five right there. Give me a high five on that because that's the, that's the answer. The cross is the answer. So, <clears throat> so just to sum up, and I know we're running, we're getting close here. Just to sort of sum up, by the cross, Jesus solved all these problems. But in the picture that we've got here, we've got a picture, um, and I've already said this. I'm just going to try to summarize everything now. We've got a picture of Jesus showing up with a bunch of, uh, in a, a new area with a bunch of people, and all of these people have different problems. Many of the problems are problems with one another. And um, <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, Jesus does one act. I, I'm going to say it like this. It's not really this way, but you, just stick with me. Jesus answers one carnal prayer request, and it causes a chain reaction through everything because there's not meant to be individual answers for just everything. There's not overall, not ultimately. Yes, he answers prayer and he touches us and he's in our areas. But ultimately, he's not, he didn't die on the cross just to answer individual. He died to put away all that flesh. And so, um, in a certain sense, and, and in the, I, know, again, I know this is a, not the best picture in the world, but it's, the Lord spoke to me uh, in my sleep and two different times in my sleep uh, and two different nights <clears throat> brought up this story to me. And, and the Holy Spirit was, was deeply pointing out <clears throat> that the only answer was because everybody was griping and couldn't get along. And the only answer was for Jesus to become those deviled pigs. That was the only answer. Everyone else should have died. But nobody else was going to die. So Jesus claimed the cross. Jesus took the cross. And, and in so doing, uh, you know, we say, well, in so doing, he saved me and did it. Yeah, but in so doing, he be, he, the, a precious, innocent lamb became deviled ham. He became a demon-infested pig, as it were. Um, and that, but he didn't just become that and then end up some horrible monster. He wisely, like this herd of pigs, rushed. I always wonder, why did they, you know, for what reason did they, you know, we go, well, they didn't want to be demon-possessed pigs, so they, they just threw themselves off. But what if, what if it really was somewhere in there a picture of the cross and that Jesus in that state knew exactly what to do? This needs to die. This needs to die. Well... All the pigs died, and you know we know that the demons in that case didn't die, but they were taken care of in Jesus' death. And we also know that in that death there was no resurrection, but in Jesus' death we come up, but only in Him. And now we have one answer because we're one with Him. He's the answer. He's not just the answer giver. And in that we're freed from our prejudices about pig farmers or, or, or city leaders or da-da-da-da, and now we're willing to lay down our life. Now we're, we're part of that herd, as it were, and we rush madly towards the cross. And all of us, with, with our devil as a devil pig, are one with Jesus in his death, and we accept it, and we embrace it, and we, we let it have an eternal effect just a temporal effect in the earth, but something that can change the world because it changes us uh, who are worldly. So, <clears throat> praise God. I'm just, I'm just glad to have uh, gotten to get that off of my chest because, like I said, the Lord's been pressing that for, for two different nights, and I mean all through the night. So let's pray real quick. Father, we don't want to come right this moment. We thank you for all the prayer requests you answer, but right this moment, we want to do something greater. 
we want to acknowledge your death, but we don't just want to acknowledge your death for us. We want to acknowledge the side of your death where you became one with us and an innocent lamb who knew no sin bore us, not just our sin, bore us and bore us to the cross, just like going off that cliff. He bore us to the cross so that that pig nature and, and worse, pig nature that's demon possessed, how bad can we be, uh, could be remedied once and for all and we could become your body and you could become our life. Thank you, Jesus. We love you so much. We give you all the glory for anything that good comes out of us. It is you. It is your life and your nature. Thank you, Lord. And it is in your name we